We do the gusset, and this video, by the way, is basically primarily um, how to measure a gusset, all right? How to get the right gusset length. Okay, I look all sorts of beat up because I'm filming this after I finish. So, Alexis, hey, welcome to Alexis Sophie Leather. This is part six of a leather satchel briefcase. I call it briefcase build. This is the last build. We did it, it's done. In the description below, there is the pattern download. Um, there's also a lot of good resources, a lot of uh, leather crafting tips, check it out. Um, also, <sighs> oh, yeah, also, you can see the other playlist uh, parts one through five. This is part six, it's down there. But a couple things before I forget on this build, three kind of rules. Um, and this is, we're gonna basically be putting the gusset. Uh, before we do that, I wanna show you the final product right here. Yep, this is uh, the final bag. Um, I would say total time, probably took 15 hours total to do it. Of course, I might be skewed because I was filming and editing and all that. But uh, I did part, I filmed part five and part six in one day. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's the bag right there. Came out really, really sharp. This is Wicked and Craig H. Latigo. They're medium brown with Havana cigar stitch. Um, yeah, really cool. Um, so three rules. Number one, do not let go of the needles when you're trying to fish through knots and loops or it gets hung up. Do not let go of your needles. If you don't let go of your needles, you won't create a knot. If you let go of your needles and try to fish it through, you're gonna, it's gonna cause more of an issue for you. Second rule is you're gonna inevitably pierce the thread almost every time when you're passing the second needle through, that's gonna, that's gonna happen. So make it a practice to uh, pull the thread on the second needle, pull the thread and not the needle a little bit to, 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 un uh, to unpierce it. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'll go into it in the video. Third rule is cut your nails because you're gonna be, there's no other way around it, you're gonna be digging into um, the leather, especially the corners when you're trying to, uh, when you're trying to uh, stitch the corners of the gusset, your fingers are gonna be digging in there, so make sure your nails are nice and clean and cut. But uh, yeah, without further ado, if you guys wanna skip along, there is a timeline, there's a timestamp in the description as well as uh, in the timeline, you'll see it marched out throughout all that. But uh, yeah, we basically finish everything up. We do the gusset, and this video, by the way, is basically primarily um, how to measure a gusset, all right? How to get the right gusset length and how to make it uh, fail-proof and foolproof uh, so you get the right size every time. But uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get right into the video. Oh, God bless you, thank you. All righty, so exciting times. Okay, so before you even touch the actual gusset, which is piece delta, like in Diego, before we even touch this, let's get the edges ready to go, okay? We gotta get this all sorts of squared away. What I mean by that is sand down some of these hard edges here, see that? And trim up this piece that kind of overlapped a little bit here and get rid of that. So, I'm gonna go ahead and punch this out and use the same tool for uh, the radius that I made here. Just punch this out. That's done. Next thing we're gonna do is trim off any of this excess, which is very, very minimal. Uh, and it's really on this side, let me show you. I don't know if a sanding, sanding will be able to take care of that. So we're gonna go ahead and just do that with this trim knife, or not trim knife, but a X-Acto blade. Just wanna be very careful. All right, let's check the other side. And there's just a little bit here. Okay. All right, now we're gonna sand all this down a little bit, knock off some of these hard edges, and kind of get this nice and, and, and even. All right, guys, I'm gonna cheat and use my tool, but you can definitely use a 150 grit 
sandpaper to do that. I'm gonna use my burnisher. Oh, the sand, sand thingy, my bob. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some more with the sandpaper. You really don't wanna mess with the dimensions of the main panel here. Really, it's uh, that laptop sleeve that's causing a little bit of grief. It's not a lot of work that you have really to do, to do with this, but just wanna get it nice and even, okay? And we'll do more of this once the gusset's attached as like a finisher. But that's it. Now we're gonna take the back panel and we're gonna scribe our line. Okay, so before we even touch the actual gusset, let's go ahead and mark our line. And this is where it's crucial. We want to come off about three, uh, about three quarters of an inch. You don't want to start, you don't want to start right at the top here. You want to come in, you want to start about three quarters of an inch. About three quarters, mark your line. Three quarters, I'm gonna put that dot right there, as well as over here. To the top of that, right to the top of that. Let me just show you, so you can see what I'm talking about. So that dot is about three quarter inches down from the top of this from the top of that uh, uh, panel. I do this every time I do a gusset. I always go about three quarters. It gives me wiggle room down the road, okay? That's super crucial um, because what we're doing with the gusset is we're matching holes, okay? So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna scribe a line. I scribe about 3 16 This is why you want this to be kind of flush. A light line, just so you can see it. And I'm gonna stop right at that three quarter inch dot, all right? I'm gonna do the same thing on the front panel. I'm gonna do the same thing, all right? I'll get back to you. So this is the front line, oh, I'm sorry, the front panel, and you could see I marked my dot and I just scribed the line all the way around in the front panel and I stopped again right at that dot about three quarters from the top. Okay. Now let's take our whatever stitching tools you're going to use. This is where it gets super, super crucial. Okay. Okay. So this is the big tip on getting the right gusset and attaching this gusset. This is probably the hardest part. This requires a little more concentration. All right, so this is, this is it right here. We're gonna start off three quarters of, at three quarters of an inch and just arbitrarily just punch holes up to the other three quarter inch mark. All right, so no matter what stitching, chisel, punch, whatever you're using, we just have to know how many holes are there, okay? We're counting holes. So let's say you punch holes all the way around and you stop at about the three quarter inch mark and we counted 150 holes, all right? Let's say we have 150 holes there. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna punch 150 holes here. The front panel, the back panel are the same, same dimensions. You're gonna punch 150 holes here all the way around from that dot all the way to the other dot and 150 holes here. And then, my friends, we know that we're gonna start at three, quarter, three quarters of an inch down. So you take your gusset, you square off one side, you start at three quarter, and you punch 150 holes, right? And then you move a three quarters of an inch again and make off, cut off another square. And that, my friends, is how you get the exact gusset. And that's what we're gonna do. I'll get into some more of a little nuances when it comes to that. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and punch on the front panel. I always attach the gusset to the front panel first. 
and then I attach that whole front panel assembly to the whole back panel. So I'm gonna punch here, count my holes, punch the back piece, count my holes, triple check to make sure that there is an, indeed uh, X amount of holes. Then punch those holes here and we're gonna stitch it together. All right, so let me punch these holes and then we'll continue. Okay, my, comp my uh, camera got all jacked up. But what I did was I started right at the three quarter inch mark. I started punching my holes right at the three quarter inch mark, all the way around. And then I stopped at the three quarter inch mark up here and I got 172 holes, all right? I got 172 holes on this, which means that moving forward, that is my magic number, 172. So 172 holes from three quarter inch mark to three quarter inch mark, 172 holes. And I had to do the same here. Let me show you. I started at the three quarter inch mark and I stitched all the way, I punched the holes all the way around. And I ended up right at the three quarter inch mark again at 172. So because these are the same dimensions, you, you have no problems. So essentially, my magic number now moving forward is 172. I wanted to uh, explain something to you guys real quick. The reason why I choose to start at 3 quarter inch is in the event that you have one longer piece. In fact, let's look at this. You see how right here, the 3 quarter inch dot is right there and this one's a little low. If I really wanted to, if I really wanted to, I can add one more hole here and not here. And that'll make this 173. And all I have to do is look on this side and see which side is short compared to the three quarter inch mark and add one more hole there and make it 173. That's why I have, I use it, uh, I start at, at uh, the three quarter inch mark is it gives you a little wiggle room if you have to add a hole and adjust so, it, so that it's a little more even. But this came out pretty good. I'm happy with that, that's not a big deal. Um, you're looking at, pff, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch that's a little short, but that's not a big deal. We could fix that on the gusset side. Speaking of the gusset side, we now know that our magic number is 172. Let's go ahead and take out piece delta, which is the last remaining piece, which is right here. And we have to start off with a square, okay? So let's go ahead and square this off. This is why you made this a little longer than needed. So this is square. We're gonna mark three quarters, right? Because we wanna start at three quarter inches down, all right? So let's mark three quarter inch to start our run, okay? That's three quarter inches down. And I'm just gonna run, I'm just gonna run a stitch line all the way across. Across the whole length of the long gusset. All right, so we have our magic number of 172 holes. So we're gonna go ahead and start right at that dot, which is three quarters from the edge, just like the panel. We're gonna start there and punch 172 holes. When we get to, when we get to the other side, um, we'll, I'll pick up from there. Regarding the tool, you guys use whatever stitch chisel, whatever you guys want. What matters is the number of holes match up uh, and you start and stop at the same spot. But this is five stitches per inch. It's the same as this, except it has 12 teeth. The beauty of having 12 teeth is that you overlap two teeth and then you'll get 10 holes. Let me show you. So if I overlap two, in other words, if I put two in the existing hole, right? I put two, when I hit this, I'm gonna get another 10. 
holes. It's a lot easier uh, to, to count that way. Just an FYI. I started here, three quarter inch from the top. I went all the way across, right? When you get to this point, don't cut this off yet. You're going to be tempted to move up three quarters of an inch and then square that off. Don't do that yet. We're going to work. We're going to start punching from here that way now. All right. All right. Now when we get to doing the other side, same thing. Since this is square, we can safely mark three quarters of an inch this way. And we can start our stitch run that way. Okay. Or what you can do is, is do this. Put your tool in place, bring your square, line it up with the bottom. Make sure everything's plumb to where it's touching the tooth on this end, right? Let it go, keep it still, and then you can mark where you're gonna start. That'll guarantee that this is going to be plumb. This hole is going to line up with that hole. All right, so let me scribe a line and punch out 172 holes on the bottom. From, from the edge, three quarter, I started there, 172 holes. Started from here, three quarters is down and parallel to this one, 172 holes. And then at the end here, three quarters inches up, I cut it off. All right. So what you need to do now is grab Q, and these are these two items. These are both Q. This is a D-ring connectors. Um, look at the print, and if you take your print D like in Delta, you're going to come down and put a hole here, and that's basically going to be where this little D-ring goes. It's going to go like this. We're going to put that hole. All right, and the D-ring goes there, and we're going to rivet that in. So we have to do that right now. So let's mark the hole and punch it. And we are going to assemble these D-rings. Super easy. You can use a Chicago screw. You can use a rivet like I am. Uh, let me use a flat anvil here. But what we need to do here is get one ready to go. So we're just going to loop it like that. All right. Get the other one ready to go. So you're going to loop them like this. Put one rivet through and you're going to put it through the back hole like that. Now if you only want one D-ring on the outside, you only do one. And you're going to put the other one here. And you're going to rivet it in or screw it in, whatever you're going to do here. And that is all she wrote. The next thing we're going to do is on these corners, just take off a little bit. You can use a quarter or a different type of punch. You just want to round it off just a teeny tiny weenie. Nothing crazy. I would say the diameter of a quarter, a one inch diameter, this is gonna help make it look nice and tight. And I'm talking just a little bit. I'll show you. We're gonna do this on all four corners. We're gonna do that on all four corners. And then we're going to sand that down, make it nice and clean. Sand that down nice and clean, and you have to bevel and burnish just this little bit, not where the holes are at, but bevel and burnish this little bit, and also the other side, okay? Cut that corner out, bevel and burnish just this little bit on both sides, all right? Let's do that. I just wanna clarify a couple of things. You don't have to use the stitching chisels and the stitches per inch that, that I'm using. This is just a technique, all right? And the technique calls for very simply, starting at a given point, I'd say three quarters of an inch, it gives you wiggle room. Punch your holes normally, stop at three quarters, count how much you have there or close to the three quarter inch mark, 
Don't fudge it, don't go one long, one short, don't do that. Just get as close as you can, count. For us, it was 172. Do the same thing on the other side. Start at three quarter, go down, punch 172 holes. If you find that one side is a little short or too long, that's why I have the three quarter inch mark. You could fudge, add one to this side, add one to the opposite side over there. Gives you room to fudge there. So you have the same holes there. Same thing here with the gusset. You start at the start point, three quarter inches down, and you punch 100, 172 holes. And then the other end, cut it off three quarter inch past that. And then you have a perfect size gusset, okay? It doesn't matter if you have a, a chisel, a, a chisel, a chisel stitching, diamond chisel thing, if they're like diamonds and circles, it's the same technique. If you have 100 holes, you need to have 100 holes on the front panel, back panel, and the gusset gives you 100 holes. You start here and here. It's really, really that simple. If you have 10 stitches per inch, really fine, then do it that way. If you have 200 holes, you do the, same. the process is the same. I just want to clarify that. Now, as far as the gusset D-ring, you can only do one. I did one on the inside and on the outside. This way you have somewhere to hang something on the inside and on the outside. You could do one, you could do none, whatever you want. I wouldn't put too much weight on this though. You know, don't put too much weight on that. Um, but for me, I like it on this side of the bag because I carry it like this and I can get to it this way, but that's a preference. You do what you want. You just got to keep that in mind when you're going to start assembling everything. All right. So with that being said, I think that's pretty clear um, how we're gonna do it. So now we're gonna start stitching, all right? There's a video on the stitching clams that I use. I'm gonna use a lot of that. Um, also, like I said, watch that uh, uh, stitching, uh, how, to, how to saddle stitch video on the tips playlist. But just so you know, these holes, uh, the holes are gonna be opposing each other. So when you line up this, see how these holes are like this? You're gonna bring this up to here, basically, essentially. And these holes are gonna be going this way. So what you're gonna end up doing is stitching like this. Long story short, you don't have to do a cast over. This is for saddle stitch advanced stuff. Watch that video, how to saddle stitch. I explained that. But basically, this can be pretty easy. You don't have to do a cast over or anything. It works itself out, looks really good. Left to right, right to left, going forward, going backward, don't matter. Just watch that video, explains a lot. But what we're gonna do is identify where, what side D-ring you want. Know that when you assemble this. And we're gonna start putting the gusset on the front panel first. So, all right, so I gotta move my camera. I gotta change the angle, cause I need my whole table. I'll show you here in a second. All right. Oh, different angle here. All right, so what we're doing here is we're gonna line up the first hole with the first hole. I use one continuous thread, you do what you want. It is kind of a nightmare, to be honest with you, because I have to come here and really find the middle and this is a lot of thread. But I like the way it looks, I don't like to pick up on the thread and you know continue somewhere else. Um, this is also another good reason why I like the thicker leather, or the stiffer leather, for this reason right here. It doesn't wanna flop. But is it gonna be a pain in the butt? Yep. It's gonna be kind of complicated until you get to about maybe two or three inches and then it starts to form. But these bull clips are really, really good. So yeah, like I said, I can probably stitch this whole gusset in probably four hours. It's just the beginning, it's a little bit time consuming. See how that looped over on itself? There's always something. Now, once you start off with the first hole, if the first hole is with the first hole, you technically should be good to go. It's perfect length. Um, no matter what chisel or st stitches per inch you're using. I wish this wasn't so floppy, but it is what it is. Oh, another side note, you wanna make sure your floor is clean because this thread will pick up dirt and stuff. Uh, but you can 
pound that out. It's not a big deal. Um, the, the white is notorious for picking up dust and stuff. So the beginning takes the longest, and once you pass the first corner, you're good to go. I would say maybe 20 minutes until I get to this corner, and that one's going to be a little bit tough, and then after that, smooth sailing. Okay, so I'm going to turn the camera off, get some of this done. I might change angles so you guys can watch, um, but don't forget to check out the... the uh, the description for timestamps so you can fast forward to a lot of the stuff but it is tedious okay for obvious reasons but it comes out super nice all right i'm talking too much let me uh turn the camera off change angle so you can see a little bit there's always something getting in the way 100 percent never fails see D-ring got caught in D-ring. I'm gonna leave it in the video because that's what it's all about. It's overcoming these little obstacles. Oh boy, it is really hot. All right, we'll pick up when we get to the corner. Let me show you a little technique. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna talk, I'm just gonna show you. I kind of run my thumb. You have to get this flat like this to get this corner. So let me just, just be quiet and you can kind of see how I do it. Remember I told you it was only gonna be 20 minutes until I get right here? Well, I lied to you. It was more like 30. And I always try to get cheeky and uh, come up with a new way of doing this, but I always come back to the old tried and true like this. But I will tell you that this corner here, the very, very first corner is indeed the hardest corner of the whole process. See right here is where you have to like grab it and kind of flip it like this. You can actually open it a little bit and kind of find it. So I, I like to flay it open a little bit so I could see the hole. Remember, this is no glue. It's just hold a hole, no glue. After this hole is where it's gonna get a little bit easier. There's no way around it. It really is just a bear. I'll probably be done in about two hours, maybe an hour and a half, maybe an hour to finish this. So a total of two hours per side. So two hours and then the back panel another two hours. So four hours to do this. This bag in the end is gonna end up being about a 15 hour build. Um, I mean, I did it in three, four, five days, but you know, part-time basically. 
because I was editing and filming and everything else. So maybe like three hour days, five three hour days. Okay. All right. I'll pick up when I finish. It's a little bright because the sun's in the background, but I'm on this turn now, so I finished this down here. And uh, I found this to be the best way of doing this. And I took my gloves off because they ripped up in a million pieces. But now that this is turned and I'm going here, once I got to here, it was smooth sailing. So, Mama. oh, don't worry about my video. It's no big deal. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Don't worry about me. I'll just sit here and work. You guys could just yell Mama. I love you. But bye. bye. So this is a lot faster. Now this is probably as fast as uh, anything else that I stitch. It's just uh, getting that started up here and getting that turn. And after that, even this turn is going to be pretty fast. I'll show you when I get there. But I just want to show you guys that real quick. I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Maybe come this way. I don't know. Ooh, this is too close to the vise. Hey, Dad, I love you. I love you too. No, you can say that. Jay, I love you, buddy. No. You could say I love you on the on the video. Yeah. You gonna be in the video and give me a hug? They haven't seen you in a long time. Oh, I love you, buddy. I love you, Dad. Have fun. Me too. And now this turn is gonna be the same like we did earlier, but a lot easier. So we'll reconvene again when we get close to the end. But basically, this turn is gonna be the same like we did this turn. Um, yeah, that's it. All right, when it comes to doing this run over here, I'll show you a quick little technique. And I gotta finish. Oh, hold on. I am in the frame. Hello. Hello. All right, I'll show you a quick technique. What you wanna do is kinda turn it like this and then make the holes line up like that. So I kind of turn it like this so that you get a better shot at the needle there, at the holes. Same thing when I put the other needle in, I hold it this way flat. Um, I, don't know, I just wanted to show you that quick little technique there. I really don't have any good angles in the shop, so I apologize, but I'm trying. All right, all right, I'm at the last hole. And uh, just like anything else, it's just gonna do a back stitch here. And I'm gonna come out the back towards the gusset end uh, so you don't see that in the front. But that's it, that's done. I'm gonna do a back stitch and just go in reverse. That way. That way. And then that way. All right, that's done. Let's take this joker off. It is done. The front gusset is done. And the hole is lined up perfect, as you can see. Super perfecto. And that is the magic of counting holes. All right, we're gonna do the back piece. We'll pick up from there. I'll show you how to set it up. 
All right, so you're gonna have to make do with what you have, but I have extra, well, I actually took that off and I'm holding this piece here. Um, on the inside in there, there's a weight just like this wrapped with, with a, a cloth so it doesn't mar up the leather. And then I have an extra piece like this, some kind of vise or something just to hold it. And what I wanna do is just get this started and then the bag will hold up itself. So it's loose, they're not connected, um, but something to hold it there, some weight so this bottom piece doesn't flail and something to hold the lid like that just to get it going. Once I get to about right here, the bag's gonna wanna hold itself together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that process and then we'll continue. So having a clip like this, uh, matching this so it's facing just like this in this orientation really helps to get it started. And also a piece of tape to hold this uh, buckle down because it's gonna wanna get caught around. So let me show you. And also when you start, put both needles through there. And then I always just do, I pull one at a time because it's gonna get hung up. And then pull this one and watch it. It's gonna get hung up on that buckle, guaranteed. Yep, see? You have to do this just for a little bit until you get to about right here and then it'll wanna hold. So like anything else, whenever you do a gusset, the starting point, the first, I don't know, 10 inches, take the longest. And after that, smooth sailing. So there's something to think about. You get in a groove and find what's comfortable for you. You might have a better rig or get really creative with clamps and stuff. I've seen guys do this on their lap somehow. I don't, I don't even know. All right, we'll pick back up when we get past the corner. All right, we got to the corner. I kind of want to show you how I manage this corner because uh, it is a bear. You want to push in the bottom in a little bit. You don't want it to be doing this. You want it to be, if anything, going this way in the bottom. So kick the bottom in and put my thumb in there like this. And with the needle through the first hole, kind of lift up a little bit and got it through that hole. Pull it out and put my left thumb in and use my knuckle as leverage. Then the second needle goes through and I'm, I'm looking in the gap. I'm actually looking through there and finding the other hole. That's literally the only way you could do this corners like this. The other thing I want to mention is that when you're trying to fight knots, do not let go of the needles. If you've got to fight a knot, once you let go of the needle and work through, then you're going to lose your needle and it's going to mess up the stitch. Never let go of the needles, all right? This, you'll never form a knot that way. Let's do one more. This is getting, so I put it in and I kind of lift up a little bit until I find the hole, found it. Second needle. I use my knuckle as a fulcrum. I open the gap and I'm looking. So it's already through the first hole. You can't see it, but it's already through the first hole. And I'm gonna tr locate the second hole, put it in there. All right, so I wanted to show you. See, look, right now, I got this crazy knot. I'm not letting go of the needle. I'm, I'm weaving through all these loops, but I'm not letting go of the needle. If you don't let go of the needle, you won't form a knot or lose your stitch. Just don't let go of the needle while you're trying to undo a knot somewhere. All right, that's all I got for you for now. We'll reconvene again a little bit. This is my favorite part. I get to sit down. I think I'm gonna show you one more process. Uh, one more part of this is uh, when I invert it, I'll probably stitch down here, then I'm gonna flip it, and I'm actually, I'm actually gonna stitch away from me, not towards me, um, and in that, how to saddle stitch video goes over, goes over that, but I'll show you that. Of course, I said this is the easiest part, but then this happens to me. See what I'm talking about? You see? But anyways, after that, all we literally have to do is bevel and burnish these edges, and then uh, 
bevel burnish do the edges, maybe 20 minutes, but for you, probably two minutes on video. And then attach those two little pieces and the base inside. Put some conditioner on there. And then we are done, my friends. This came out really nice. Came out really nice. All right. I'll start again once I get to the part where I have to go upside down or backwards. That's what we'll do. I went ahead and flipped it. I kind of wanted to show you how you get these corners, little technique here. You could cheat a little bit, pull it back and look. Now inevitably, I think I told you this in the intro, or I'm gonna tell you in the intro, so you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're gonna pierce through the thread, okay? So there's two rules, never let go of the needle, and every stitch, pull the thread on the second, second needle to, to un, unpierce it. I don't know if that makes sense. You don't wanna pull it tight when a, when a thread is pierced. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm, it's gonna happen, I'm gonna end up piercing this thread. But what I do, oh, this is gonna be a, it's gonna be a hard one. All right, so right here, instead of just pulling the needle and tightening it, I'm gonna pull this thread out a little bit to unpierce it. You gotta do that every time. I don't know if you noticed, I don't know. Am I talking? <laughs> Hello? 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 I don't know if you noticed, but that's what I do. Yeah, all right, so I'm basically done. We'll reconvene. I'm not gonna show you the rest of the stitching, but it's basically done. I got another 10 minutes. Um, and then we'll sand it and call it. All right, let me close the garage door. It's getting nighttime. Got the AC on. I got one more stitch. One more stitch, y'all. Actually, I already did it. I just got to do the back stitch. <clears throat> Come on, puppy. All right, so after this, we're going to sand the edges. Mm. Oh, we're going to sand the edges. Yo, I did that in one sitting. That was tough. We're going to sand the edges, bevel, burnish, and then condition, and then put the little strap on top. Mmm, that's it. Whoo! Let's take a closer look at it. Let me just do this real quick. Burn the little edges there, the slack. Dunskis. All right, let's take a look at it. All right, we're sanding the edges. And we just want to make this as even as possible using the 150 grit. Nothing crazy, you don't want to take off too, mater too much material, but you can see some of the high spots. All right, let me do some more sanding and I'll get back to you. Bevel, I use a number one. All the way around. Burnish time. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish up beveling, I'm sorry, burnish, burnishing, put the uh, edge coat on there and then uh, we'll assemble the little strap on the side and then we're done. Next, take R, the base plate. We're gonna just shove it inside. It's just gonna slip right in there. Let me put this the right way. 
Next, we have this hole and the one in the front. That's going to be for piece L. You have two pieces left, all right? You're going to take a Chicago screw. Let me show you any kind of sh Chicago screw. I'm using these. These you can get on Amazon. These are eight millimeter Chicago screws, but I think quarter inch or three eighths Chicago screws should be suffice. And all we're gonna do is put them in there. I already got one ready to go in there. I'll put a, a drop of Loctite. You could put a drop of Loctite in there, um, but I like to, you should look at one of these tools. It's one of those flat heads that uh, will actually hold it in place. This really helps, but you can do it another way. And I'm gonna put a little drop of Loctite in here, right on that screw. Take this, weave it through the back. And I gotta find, find it, which is right there. Found it. Make sure this is nice and straight. Let's do another one. A little dip dab of, of uh, red Loctite on there. Put the screw on this end and it's gonna come wrap around and go into this, this one here. That hole that you have up there up front. And this is uh, eight millimeter um, Chicago screws. These are solid brass. You can use, I think quarter inch or, so there you go. There's that. I'm gonna do the other side and then we'll take a closer look. And I think we're done. All right. So now I'm just putting some of my uh, finisher on there. You can finish it however you guys like. This is my own homemade leather conditioner, which is basically meets foot oil, beeswax, melted together. All right, y'all, that's it. That's the video. I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, what do we do? We basically attached the gusset. That was basically the whole thing, uh, the gusset for the most part. That was like the meat and potatoes of the bag. Um, now you know how to do a gusset. Hopefully you guys, uh, you probably have better ways of doing it. If you do, let me know. As far as uh, positioning the bag to stitch it, it's just, it's really awkward. That's why it's crucial to know the different methods of saddle stitching, forward, backwards, inverted. Um, this way you can kind of overcome any kind of obstacles that come your way. So yeah, that's the bag. I hope you guys appreciate this whole build. Anyway, God bless you. Thank you very much. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you around. Bye.